Welcome to the TechMind Factory video blog. In this specific video, we are going to talk about event sourcing with Entity Framework Core and Azure SQL. Before we jump into the content, I would like you to know that there is also a blog article available on my blog called techmindfactory.com. So I encourage you to also read the article because you will find interesting details there. And there is also source code repository related with sample that I will present in this video. It's called Cars Island Microservices and it's available on my GitHub. Both links to the article and to this repository are presented in a video description. Okay, great, so we can start. So what is event sourcing? There is a lot of confusion around the internet about event sourcing and, and some, some people are saying that it's hard and there are different patterns. So I would like to just clarify the basics of the event sourcing. So event sourcing stores each state mutation as a separate record called an event in opposite to state oriented persistence that only keeps the latest version of the entity state. So you can try to imagine a, a simple monolithic application and inside this application you will have accrued operations implemented. And in a, in a simple application you will only store the latest version of the entity. So if you have like for instance a table in the database with cars and this specific car, let's say BMW, has price per day, uh, you, you have price per day set to 100 and you will update this price per day to be 200, you will just forget about this earlier price, so 100. You will only store information that the, about the current state, so the car price per day is now 200. So event sourcing is just the way to persist the state of the entities. Just to clarify, Event sourcing has nothing to do with microservices. So we, we cannot mix those two terms, event sourcing and microservices. You can use event sourcing even with the monolithic solution. So a short clarification at the beginning. In this specific video, we will talk about event sourcing with Entity Framework Core and Azure SQL Database. Yes, it's possible to implement event sourcing with Azure SQL Database and Entity Framework Core ORM. And as you can see on this sample diagram here on this, uh, on this slide, uh, there is a catalog microservice and uh, this microservice uh, presents data related with cars in the car rental company. And right now, what we will do, what we will discover is the fact that in the Azure SQL database, we will have two separate tables. One table will be responsible for storing uh, current data about cars. And the separate table, integration event log table, will be responsible for storing uh, events related with uh, changes related to some entities, in this case, cars. So. In the, in the catalog table, we will always have uh, an actual data for, for cars in the catalog. And in the integration event log table, we will store uh, information about changes that happened in the past related to uh, cars in the catalog. Okay, but that was about the theory. So right now, let's jump to the Visual Studio 2019 and see this in action. Here we are in the Visual Studio 2019. Now, first of all, let's start with the Azure SQL database structure. So as you can see on the left side, there is SQL Server Object Explorer open in a Visual Studio. And here is my catalog database. And inside this catalog database, as you can see, I have three tables. First table is for Entity Framework Core Migrations History. But in this specific video, we will focus on those two tables, cars table and integration event log table. And in the cars table, let me uh, present the data. So I will click view data. As we can see, there are four cars. 
And there is some basic information about the cars in the catalog like brand model, price per day or whether it's available for rent or not. And then in the integration event log table, if I click view data, there is information about the events, so about the changes related to data uh, in the cars uh, table. So you can try to, so let me put an example. If we update one of those cars uh, in this uh, cars uh, database, uh, in, in this cars table, if I change the price uh, per day value for this first car, this information should be also stored in the integration event log table. Because in, in, the, in the future, we would like to know what changes were applied to this specific car. So, for instance, how the price changed in a specific timeline. Okay, great. So, right now, let me close uh, this uh, data. And right now, we will uh, describe what's happening in the source code. But before that, let me launch the catalog API and present a short demo. Here it is, Cars Island Catalog API. And as you can see, there are four endpoints. And here we will use put um, operation to update existing car in the catalog um, table. So right now, what I will do, I will just paste information ab about BMW car. And as you probably remember, price per day currently is set to 300. But we would like to change this price per day to be 400. Now, before I execute this operation, let me get back quickly to the Visual Studio. In the Visual Studio, let's open a SQL Server Object Explorer again. And here, let me open the data that exists in the cars uh, table. And as we can see for the BMW car, price per day is set to 300. Let me also open integration event log data. Here, there is only one event registered right now. And now let me get back to the Swagger page. So here on the Swagger, I will click Execute button. And after a few seconds, I should see the confirmation that the price was updated. Yeah, there is 204 status. So uh, this price per day should be updated. So let's check it in the database now. So here it is, Visual Studio, and let me open the data in the cars table. Right now we can see the price per day is uh, 300. Let's refresh the data in this table. And right now we can see that price per day was updated and right now is 400. So now let's uh, open integration event log data and let's refresh it. And as we can see right now, there is a new record uh, here in this integration event log table. And we can see that there, there are different value, values provided. So event ID, event type name. So in this case, this is car price per day changed integration event. There is also state because we can uh, we can uh, provide us like a state whether this was updated or not. So, uh, so it's, it's also uh, configurable here. Uh, how many times those uh, th this uh, concrete event was sent, uh, when it was created, and there is also a content here. So in the in the column con uh, named content, we can see the the content of the event, and there is also transaction ID from the entity framework core. So if I copy this content, let me copy the, the, the content and paste it in the in the text editor, we can analyze what's happening here in this content. This is the content of this event. And as we can see, there is the ID of the car of the specific car where the change happened. So in this case, we change car price per day for this specific car with the ID. There is also information about new price. So 400. There is also information about the old price per day, so 300. And there is also ID of the event and when it was uh, created. Great. So as you can see, it's as simple as that. So once we update car price per day for a specific uh, car in the catalog, we can then save information about the event in a separate table called integration event log. So right now, let's jump into implementation details.
Here is the Cars Catalog controller located in the Cars Island Catalog API. And right now, what we will do, we will discuss update car async operation. So the update um, operation endpoint. So what we can see here, we can first of all check whether uh, this car exists in the catalog. If it does not exist, we can just return not found. But if it exists, what we can do, we can get the old price per day for this specific car. And we can also uh, um, create new variable called has price per day change. And this variable will be true if we update the price per day uh, property. It will be false if the price uh, is um, uh, the same. And right now what we will do, we will update uh, price per day property on a, a car from the catalog. And right now what we will do also, we will use cars catalog db context uh, and we will update uh, this specific car. And please note that right now, even if I call update on the uh, cars uh, catalog db context on the uh, cars uh, db set, this update was not uh, sent to the da database yet. Right now, this entity is tracked by uh, change tracker in the entity framework core, but this change is not saved to the database yet. So below what will happen, we can check whether the price per day has changed. And if, it, uh, if it's changed, what we can do, we can create a new car price per day uh, change integration event. And let me open uh, this class briefly and discuss it. So we can see that this uh, car price uh, per day change integration event derives from integration event. In the integration event, this is abstract class, we have only the ID of the event and creation date. And if I get back to the car price uh, per day change integration event, we can see that there are a few properties we saw in the database uh, data. There is a car ID, so the ID of the specific car, uh, for which we updated the car price per day property. And there is also new price per day property and old price per day property. So we would like to know in the future what happened with this price, whether it was increased or decreased. And we're just creating this uh, car price per day integration event. Once we have this uh, object created, what we can do, we can, um, we can add this um, uh, event to the uh, integration event service. And we are doing it using add and save event async. And here we have to pass this integration event. We will now focus on this uh, below line, uh, publish events through event bus async, because this line is responsible for sending events across different uh, microservices using Azure Service Bus. And I discussed it in my previous article available on YouTube and also on my techmindfactory.com blog. So I encourage you to read this article about asynchronous communication uh, between microservices using Azure, uh, Azure uh, Service Bus. So right now here, uh, let's see what's happening in the add and save event async method. So let's go to the implementation. And before uh, I will discuss this uh, method here, it's worth to mention that there is a dedicated class that is responsible for handling different changes related to entities. It's called Catalog Integration Event Ser uh, Service. And this service implements iCatalog Integration Event uh, Service. Let's look on this interface. And as you can see, there are two methods. First method, as I mentioned before, is responsible for publishing events through the uh, event bus, in this uh, case, Azure Service Bus. And the second method is responsible for saving uh, changes related, related to entities and also um, saving this information in the integration event log table in the database. So let's get back to this class and let's see what's happening here in this add and save event async method. What we are doing here, we are using entity framework core transactions. So here we have this resilient transaction that create new. And what we are doing here, we are passing car catalog db context here. Uh, 
So before we discuss what's happening in the execute async, let's discuss this resilient transaction class. So let me go to the create new method. Let me open this and briefly discuss what's happening here. So this resilient transaction class is res responsible for aggregating different operations related to changes in the database in a single transaction. So what we can see here in the execute async method, we are passing the, the, uh, the action, so the, the delegate, uh, what should happen in a specific transaction. So here what we are using, we are using uh, entity framework core transaction. There is a create execution strategy method. We are creating this strate strategy. And for this strate strategy, we are executing async uh, the transaction. So here we can see that uh, we are using this past context and we beginning transaction. And inside, inside this transaction, we are executing this action that was uh, that was passed as a parameter to this execute async method. So here we are executing the action, and once it's completed, uh, we are committing this transaction. And if we get back to the car catalog, car, uh, catalog integration event service, we will see that once we create this new resilient transaction, we are calling execute async, and here we are passing two actions. So first of all, we have to save all changes related to cars in the cars table. So here we have cars catalog, car catalog db context dot save changes async. And this will save all the changes to the database related with cars in the catalog. And the second operation here will be responsible for storing information about this specific event in the integration event log table. So this second table we saw in the database. So, so there are two operations. First of all, we would like to update pri price car per day in the uh, cars uh, table. And also we would like to save information about this, uh, uh, about this update in the uh, integration event log uh, table. So two operations here, and that is why we are using transaction because we want to make sure that if we save changes in the cars table, we will also pass uh, information about this event to the integration event log table. So if anything happened here, so there will be like a problem with saving those changes, the second operation will be also rollback. So that's the power uh, of the transactions in the entity framework core. And right now, Let's look on the save event async method on the event log uh, service. What we can see here in the save event async, we are passing the event and also we are passing the current transaction that was created on the uh, car catalog DB context. And right now, if I go to the uh, definition of save events async, let me open it, we will see here that we are passing this event and transaction. We have to also check whether this transa transaction is not null. And then what is happening here, we creating, uh, we creating a new event log entry. And as you can see here, there is integration event log context, and we are using the transaction that we uh, created uh, before in the car integration event service. And then what we're doing here, we saving information, we, we adding information about this event first, and then we are saving changes on the integration event log context. So it's very important to mention here that saving those changes will happen in the same transaction in which we will save changes to the cars table. So that is why we have to pass this transaction here. So at the end, what will happen, we, we will save changes in the cars table and we will also save uh, information about the in, in integration event in the integration event log table. So after all those operations here, we can just return information that we updated uh, the specific entity. And that's it. 
Once again, I encourage you to read my article on techmindfactory.com blog. And also, if you'd like to dive into implementation details, check the GitHub repository. All the links are provided in the video description. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to contact me either on Twitter or LinkedIn. And of course, I encourage you to visit my blog, techmindfactory.com. See you in the next video.